Hi guys, so some of you have been concerned about skin cancer, so I thought I'd make a quick video of how you may be able to identify some of these skin cancers early on using pictures. However, I must reiterate that skin cancers can only be diagnosed through biopsy. So if you're worried about a particular rash mole or skin lesion, then please see your GP to arrange your biopsy or to refer you to a skin specialist. Also, the pictures and the information that I've summarized for you today, I've taken from a website called Dermnet New Zealand. If you want to explore any of the skin conditions I mentioned today further, then I'll leave a link of this website in the YouTube description below. So let's get straight to what I'm talking about today. So the first form of skin cancer is the basal carcinoma. It's the most commonest type and it particularly affects the elderly, those with fair skin, and those with the sun damaged areas or areas where there's been excessive skin exposure to the sun. It's a slowly growing plaque or a nodule. It can be skin colored pigmented as you can see from this picture. It varies in size from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter and it can bleed spontaneously and ulceration may occur. Some of these lesions may have tiny blood vessels across the surface called telangiectasia, as you might be able to see here from this picture and this picture, especially if you look up closely. There's also another form of basal cell carcinoma called the nodular type, which is the most common type affecting the face. It has a shiny or a pellule nodule with a smooth surface, as you can see here. It may also have a central depression or ulceration, so its edges appear rolled up, and you can just about see that in this picture too, which also seems like it's starting to ulcerate. The blood vessels cross its surface. They can be seen when looking at it closely, as I've shown you with some of the earlier pictures. The other form of basal carcinoma is the superficial type. It's the most common type affecting younger adults and it tends to occur in the upper trunk and shoulders. And it has a slightly scaly irregular plaque and it can be multiple. And I'll just give you some time to have a look at these pictures that demonstrate this. Then there's something called the morphic type. This is usually found in the mid-facial sites. It's like a waxy scar-like plaque with an indistinct border. And this is in one picture. This is shown in one picture that helps to demonstrate this. Now the complications of basal cell carcinoma include, although they don't spread or metastasize like some of the more aggressive cancers, which I'll mention in a bit, they can be deeply infiltrating and can be difficult and impossible to treat surgically if they've been left alone for a long time. Now moving swiftly on to the second type of cancer which is a squamous cell carcinoma. This is a more aggressive cancer which can sometimes spread and this can also be told by its appearance as it looks more, I wouldn't say horrible but you know this is serious when it looks mucky looking. However having said that as you will find out soon some squamous cell carcinomas can look pretty harmless as well. So as with the basal cell carcinoma it's more common with age in those with frequent sunburn or sun damaged skin and in smokers. They tend to grow over weeks to months, they may ulcerate, they can be tender or painful, and they're located in the sun-exposed sites, particularly the face, lips, ears, hands, the forearms, and the lower legs. This particular squamous cell carcinoma is located on the ear, and it looks like it's ulcerated. Interestingly, it does seem to have a rolled up edge, like what you'd find in a basal cell carcinoma, so it's important to have all suspicious lesions checked out by your GP. The size tends to vary from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. And I'll just give you some time to have a look at a few others. And actually, this is one that I showed you earlier. These are pictures of high risk squamous cell carcinomas, which have an increased risk of metastatic spread, especially if their diameter is more than two centimeters and if they occur in the elderly, as in this example. This is another example of a high-risk squamous cell carcinoma. And as you can see, it looks mucky looking and ulcerated. And I believe the diameter is more than two centimeters. Finally, this is another squamous cell carcinoma occurring on the lip, which is also a high-risk squamous cell carcinoma. The good thing is though that most squamous cell carcinomas can be cured by treatment, especially if the lesion is small. Now moving swiftly onto the other types of skin cancers. So other types of squamous cell carcinoma which may spread include a cutaneous horn. So the horn is due to excessive production of keratin, which is basically just a protein that normally forms the main structural component of a hair. And sometimes a cutaneous horn can be an underlying squamous cell carcinoma, so it needs to be investigated through a biopsy. Then there's also another type called cratoacanthoma, 
actually, I'm just going to stop you there and tell you that you don't need to worry about or uh, you don't need to remember these long gobbledygook-like medical terms. All you need to remember is how to recognize that the, this lesion or mole that I may have might be serious and get it checked out by your GP through, and get your GP to arrange a referral to the dermatologist for a possible biopsy. So um, this is a rapidly growing nodule that may resolve without treatment and it typically looks like this. Another form of squamous cell carcinoma can look like a slow growing warty tumor on the sole of the foot, which looks like a, and this looks like a dark, large dark brownish wart. <clears throat> then there's also something called lectinic keratosis, which is a scaly spot on sun damaged skin. It is also known as solar keratosis. It is considered precancerous or an early form of squamous cell carcinoma. They are more likely to appear if the immune function is poor due to aging, recent sun exposure, and they can appear as a flat thickened papule or plaque, white or yellow, with a scaly, warty or horny surface. And they can be skin colored, red or pigmented and painful. And these are some of the pictures demonstrating actinic keratosis. Another form is a squamous cell carcinoma that you can get from genetic conditions and they can present with a, the patient can present with multiple squamous cell carcinomas as in this picture where there's multiple nodules occurring in the hands of this person. The other type of cancer is a basal squamous carcinoma. This is a mixed form of basal and squamous cell carcinoma. It's potentially more aggressive than the other forms of basal cell carcinomas. And from this first picture, you can almost see a rolled up edge and find blood vessels if you look carefully. However, it just looks more regressive than just a normal, typical basal cell carcinoma. And here are some pictures. Now finally, moving on to melanomas, which is a most serious type of skin cancer. And this is due to uncontrolled growth of the pigment cells inside the skin and these can occur anywhere on the body and not just the sun exposed sites and this is what one may look like. <clears throat> this is more common with increasing age in those with fair skin in those patients that have many molds on their body and in those with a strong family history of melanoma. Melanomas can arise from otherwise normal appearing skin and this occurs in about 75% of melanomas or from within, within a mole or a freckle which starts to grow larger and change in appearance. These are called precursor lesions and a freckle is one type. The first sign of a melanoma is usually an unusually looking freckle or mole. Melanoma may be detected at an early age when it is only a few millimeters in diameter, but it may grow to several centimeters in diameter before it is diagnosed. Now I'll go through some other pics of how and where a melanoma may present. These are called superficial spreading melanomas and are the most common type of melanomas presenting as an irregular shaped with different shades of color. These two pictures show melanomas occurring on the face and they are re relatively large with irregular borders and you can just appreciate the different shades of brown which is typical of a melanomas. This is one occurring on the foot. These are what we call subungual melanomas affecting the nail. These are nodule melanomas presenting in the form of a lump. Some more advanced melanomas include such as this example of a subungual melanoma where there's been destruction of the nail plate. And this nodular type which has grown and ulcerated and unfortunately, in this case, the melanoma has spread to other parts of the skin. Now, moving swiftly onto the APCDE criteria, this can be used to identify the early stages of melanoma. So the first is asymmetry. And as you can see from this picture, this melanoma has an asymmetrical shape to it. The, the second is border irregularity. And this particular melanoma has an irregular border. Then the third is color variation, and this particular melanoma has different shades of color, such as red, pink, and brown. And D is for diameter over six millimeters, so you're more likely to have melanoma if the diameter is more than six millimeters. And E is for evolving, so it's enlarging or changing. So if you notice any of these changes, you should see a GP. 
So in terms of prevention, there's a great deal of evidence to show that very careful sun protection at any time of life reduces the number of skin cancers. This is particularly important in aging, sun damaged and fair skin and in patients that are immune suppressed and in those who are who already have actinic keratosis or previous skin cancers. So in terms of prevention, you should be staying indoors or under the shade, especially in the middle part of the day. You should be wearing clothing that covers the sun exposed sites. You should also apply high protection factor SPF 50 cream or spray. You should avoid indoor tanning such as sunbeds and there's some evidence that oral nicotinamide which is vitamin B3 in a dose of 500 milligrams twice daily can reduce the severity of squamous cell carcinomas in people at high risk. Okay guys so that was quite a detailed video but I didn't feel that I'd do any justice if it was any less than what I've already presented today and finally please remember that the skin conditions I've discussed today the appearances may differ and they may be different in different people so if you're worried about a particular mold please see your gp finally if you would like me to continue to bring you valuable medical content then please consider subscribing thank you